Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about destructive versus constructive interference. Now we're going to put interference in quotes because we don't really want interference of any kind, but I want you to start thinking about the things you're doing in your room because they really have a negative impact on sound quality. You might not think they do, but sound energy, just because we can't see it, the things we do in our room really have a negative impact on the sound quality. Let's take windows. There isn't a worse surface that you could have in a room than glass. It has a negative impact on frequency response. I understand the need for natural light. I understand the need to, to look outside and stuff, but it really has a negative impact. So we have to be very careful where we locate our windows in our rooms, okay? Room modes, oh, excessive pressure, unwanted excessive pressure. We've done numerous videos on that. Lots of interference on the direct energy. We don't want that. Size of the room is critical. Can't use every room size for every usage. You have to match the two together. You wouldn't put drums in a closet. Some people do, but you don't, okay? Because it's just too much energy, too small of a box. Pressure levels, you gotta be very careful at what you record at. You gotta be very careful at what you're listening at. When we do videos here in the studio, we're monitoring my voice and the pressure level of my voice. We're trying to keep it within a range that the post-production people can work with. So if I go too high, I yell too loud, we're gonna have distortion. So those are destructive things. Coffee tables in front of your listening position. Put your drink somewhere else, get rid of the coffee table. Okay, so all kinds of excess objects in the room for home theater and listening rooms. Each object in your room produces what we call spurious reflection. So it's another object, it's another speaker, if you will, in your room that we have to manage the reflections off of. Predictability, consistency, remember? That's what we gotta have, okay? So the constructive parts that we can do to our room are match usage to size and volume. We can use the proper rates and levels of absorption we can use the proper types, amount, and positioning of diffusion, and we can manage the energy to match the usage. So mixing rooms are gonna be a little bit different than listening rooms. Not that great, we still have to use the same principles. Live rooms are drastically different than vocal rooms. Vocal rooms are drastically different than mastering rooms. So everything has its position in this continuum that we use in audio. So we have to pay particular attention to all those variables, and we have to use one governing position when we're dealing with destructive and constructive interference. Do no harm. Just like the medical profession, do no harm. So whatever we're gonna do, it can't be worse. Came across a situation where this applied the other day. I didn't see any photos, so I can't give you a really good detailed explanation, but for some reason, the client had to have the right channel in the corner of the room. And I told him, put the left channel in the other corner because the source has to have the same interference, so to speak, from the room, so it balances out. So you can't have one speaker in the corner and one free space. So I never really said that because you all know I don't like uh, speakers in the corner and there's many reasons for that. But in this case, we had to have a starting point. We had to have a baseline. So both speakers had to go in the corner. Then we're gonna have to treat accordingly. I'll keep you posted on how it comes out. So destructive and constructive interference. Remember, just because we can't see sound, we still have to act like it's in the room. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.